so there are a lot of confusion regarding coagulation studies the coagulation studies <clears throat> so i will be discussing those mcqs only bleeding time is prolonged only bleeding time is prolonged and the patient is on loprin what is the cause the answer is loprin well before uh, i think before coming into the extra mcqs i should dis- uh, should discuss the normal mechanism well bleeding is the function of bleeding control is the function of platelet the bleeding time is the function of platelet the bleeding time the pt pt or inr it is the function of extrinsic pathway it is the function of extrinsic pathway the aptt it is the function of intrinsic pathway it is the function of intrinsic pathway so if you are having only problem with bleeding time if only bleeding time is increased if only bleeding time is increased the answer is problem with platelets problem with platelets if you are having only increased bleeding time the clotting time and the uh, <coughs> the pt and aptt are normal so it means you are having a pr- pr- problem with platelets now coming toward the platelets mcq a person is on treatment for ischemic heart disease and he is having increased bleeding time the pt aptt and the clotting studies are normal what is the cause the answer is loprin r clopidogrel these two are anti platelet and they only prolong the bleeding time they only prolong the bleeding time now another mcq uh, a person with a, a high bleeding time and he is not on any drug and the pt apt and all the things are normal and the baselines are normal what is the cause so if you are having a normal platelets and increased bleeding time if you are having a, a normal platelets with increased bleeding time and the coagulation study is normal what is the cause qualitative platelet defect if this is your platelet this is another platelet there is adhesion normally between them so there is a quality of the platelet is lost qualitative defect so there are two diseases which causes qualitative defect barnard soldier syndrome barnard soldier syndrome and glenn's main thrombosthenia and glenn's main thrombosthenia so if there is increased bleeding time coagulation studies are normal and the person is not on any drug and the rfts are normal urea is normal then the cause is barnard soldier or glenn's main thrombosthenia you should look for one of them in the option they they won't give both option uh in 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 one mcq there will be either both of them or there will be an option with both a and b or there will be uh, given separately so barnard soldier or glenn's main thrombosthenia so <clears throat> these two mcqs regarding the platelets the increased bleeding time is covered well, there is another mcq a person is on platelet and he is going uh to undergo surgery major surgery when will you stop the platelets so the answer is that is 3 days 3 to 5 days ideally 72 hours why because and the half life of platelet is 3 to 5 days and there are more platelet production more platelet production so the the loprin it binds with the platelet irreversibly for the whole life of the platelet so there must be more platelet formation to 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 take part or help in the uh, stoppage of bleeding so the loprin must be stopped 3 to 5 days before surgery or 72 hours before surgery so that new platelets are formed and released into the blood and helps in the uh and helps in the uh, um, platelet aggregation and helps in the platelet aggregation so these were the th- uh, there is another mcq a patient is having increased bleeding time platelet count is normal and the patient is having increased urea so what is the cause uremia when urea is attached to the platelet they don't st- they can't stick to one another so again there is increased bleeding time so again there is increased bleeding time now coming toward the next thing a person is having increased bleeding time and a person is having increased aptt 
the PT is normal. What is the cause? This is one well brain disease. So if you are having increased bleeding time and increased APTT, this is one well brain disease and the PT is normal. And the PT is normal. This is one well brain disease because the one well brain helps in the in the platelet in the uh, clot in the in the platelet aggregation. It helps in the platelet aggregation and one well brain one well brain also helps in the intrinsic pathway. It is a co factor for factor eight. The one well brain factor eight normally prevents the degradation of factor eight. So if it is deficient what happens the factor eight is degraded and you are having increased APTT. You are having increased APTT. So this is actually one well brain. It helps both in the aggregation of platelets. So it gives you increased bleeding time and it helps in the uh, factor eight active and, and it helps in the preservation of factor eight. So uh, it has a role. Uh, it has a role in both. Next, a person is having a person is having increased APTT and thrombosis. Normally increase APTT cause bleeding but when you are having incre increased APTT and there is a risk of thrombosis or actually there is thrombosis DVT or there is pulmonary embolism what is the diagnosis antiphospholipid antibody syndrome keep in mind antiphospholipid antibody syndrome and this is repeated again and again so you must focus on this a person is having DVT and if you look for the count APTT that is increased so increased APTT was supposed to cause, to cause hemorrhage or bleeding, not thrombosis. So the answer is antipospolipid antibody syndrome. Antipospolipid antibody syndrome. So coming toward the, the next, that is uh, you are having uh, increased PT, increase APTT, decrease platelets increase PT increase APTT decrease platelet so the platelets are consumed and clotting factors are also consumed so what is the disease which can cause this platelet are decreased PT APTT are going up this is a DIC this is DIC disseminated intravascular coagulation so it means your platelet are also consuming and your clotting factors are also consuming so coming toward DIC there are two MCQ that are asked for DIC what is the confirmatory test increase FDPs fibrin degradation products increase FDPs and what is the severity of DIC how do you measure it decrease serum fibrinogen decrease serum fibrinogen because initially the liver compensate for the uh, consumption of fibrinogen but later on when become it severe the liver cannot compensate and there is a uh, thrombosis and uh, conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin and the liver cannot compensate so it become more severe so for severity serum fibrinogen for diagnosis increase fdps so that was regarding the dic a patient is having only aptt is increased bleeding time is normal clotting time uh, is increased uh, but the bleeding time is normal platelet count is normal and the person is not on any drug so what is the diagnose so increase APTT is a problem with the intrinsic pathway so you look for hemophilia if only APTT is increased but if APTT is increased along with bleeding time then there is one well brand disease that is another thing increase APTT look for hemophilia look for hemophilia and this is male for one well brain disease that is usually female as far as CPS fee MCQs are concerned uh, hemophilia is always male one well brain uh, female one well brain that is female it is excellent hemophilia is excellent it is excellent so only APTT is increased that is hemophilia only APTT is increased that is hemophilia only APTT is increased that is hemophilia so coming next a young patient having increased breathing time platelet count is low all other studies APTT PT 
clotting studies, RFTs and baselines are normal. What is the diagnosis? Well, in this case, the most likely cause is ITP. As far as the CPS CQs are concerned for FCPS part first, you should choose ITP. You should choose ITP. You should choose ITP and ITP is the diagnosis of exclusion. You do bone marrow to exclude other causes. And there is increased destruction. The antibodies against your platelet and that are removed by the spleen. So splenectomy, uh, the first, the best initial thing is the steroids. Uh, and if there is no response to the steroid, then the next best thing is the splenectomy. Splenectomy, splenectomy. And if after splenectomy there is no response, then the best next step is rituximab. Rituximab. And if after rituximab there is no response, then L thrombopec alpha. The L thrombopec alpha, these are the very expensive medication. And uh, Nawaz Sharif was using it because of the ITP. It, it actually stimulates your uh, platelets a precursor to increase the platelet count. So that was regarding the ITP. So the hemophilia, von Willebrand disease, the ITP, the DIC, uh, they will check you uh, for these most of the time. Uh, for the FCPS uh, MCQs, they will check you by these MCQs. Tissue trauma. Whenever there is a tissue trauma, which pathway is initiated for blood clotting sample tissue factor factor 3 is released uh, this is a tissue thromoplastin and activates the extrinsic pathway it activates the extrinsic pathway when there is a blood trauma or blood vessel trauma now this is the time to pick the uh, factor 12 activation and how factor 12 is activated by contact with the collagen by contact with the non-endothelial surface or the collagen so if there is a trauma to the tissue there is usually extrinsic pathway activated if trauma to the blood then intrinsic pathway that is factor 12 is activated and how factor 12 is activated when it comes contact with the non-endothelial surface most common is collagen so when it comes uh, in contact with the collagen so factor 12 is activated and activates the other pathways and activates the other pathways so correct correct these two mcqs i think the keys are wrong uh, in the books uh, in the in the books and in the discussion uh, so for the tissue trauma uh, you have to choose the tissue thromboplastin uh, factor 7 has got a role if the tissue thromboplastin is not there or factor 3 is not there then factor 7 you should take that and for the intrinsic pathway the trauma to the blood or trauma to the blood vessel uh, so the factor 12 is activated and how it is activated by contact with the collagen non endothelial surface now the heparin increases which time heparin it increases the ptr aptt heparin or uh, clexane it increases the aptt the intrinsic pathway it increases the aptt the intrinsic pathway the warfarin it increases which time the ptr inr <coughs> And it, <clears throat> it inhibits the <clears throat> vitamin K dependent carboxylase enzyme in the liver. So there is no modification of the clotting factors in the liver. And I have detail I have discussed in details how it works and what is bridging therapy and why we, why we should bridge the warfarin with heparin for the first five days. Well the target APTT with heparin with heparin is that is 1.2 1 1.5 to 2.5. This is therapeutic range for APTT. For PTRINR, that is 2 to 3 most of the time. 2 to 3. And for APTT, there is 1.5 to 2.5. This is the, these are the ter therapeutic targets. The therapeutic targets. When will you check the INR after starting the warfarin? The answer is 72 hours because it starts working after 48 to 72 hours. So every third day. So every third day. So every third day. Because it has got no role on the already formed clotting factors. It has got a role in it prevents the formation of further products, clotting factors. So the already products are present there. The already formed clotting factors are there for three days. And when heparin starts working, the answer is immediately. Starts working immediately. But after how long you should check the PT the APTT after heparin? The answer is six hours. The answer is six hour what is the antidote of heparin that is the protamine sulfate 
and what is the antidote for warfarin that is the vitamin k vitamin k is antagonist to uh, warfarin that is antagonist to the warfarin so i think we have uh, covered all the things uh, regarding the clotting and coagulation case kids so this is more than enough well there is another mcq uh, uh, the cause of hypercoagulability in nephrotic syndrome is the antithrombin 3 is lost the antithrombin 3 is lost in urine because these are the proteins in a nephrotic syndrome you you are losing protein so the antithrombin 3 which is, when it is lost so there is increase in coagulation another is you are giving heparin to the person but you are not achieving the target the blood the APTT are the APTT is not increasing the answer is antithrombin 3 deficiency because the clexane attached to it and activates it and the antithrombin 3 then removes the thrombin from the blood and that in, uh, increases the APTT but if you are having no antithrombin 3 in the body whatever dose of heparin you inject to the patient if you if you give 10 times the dose of the normal dose uh, you would not in see an increase in APTT. Why? Because you are having no antithrombin 3. Heparin works through it. So in nephrotic syndrome, uh, the antithrombin 3 is going to be lost. So the, again, the heparin will not work for the hypercoagulability of nephrotic syndrome. What is the most common cause of acquired hypercoagulability? The answer is smoking. And what is the most common disease of acquired thrombosis the answer is antiphospholipid antibody syndrome so focus on the word disease and cause most common cause of acquired thrombophilia is smoking most common cause of acquired thrombophilic disorder is it is antiphospholipid antibody syndrome what is the most common cause of inherited thrombophilia the answer is factor 5 laden mutation the factor 5 laden mutation the second name for it is activated protein C resistance so do not be confused by the, the other names the CPSP using the other name activated protein C resistance is the other name for uh, factor 5 laden mutation well the factor 5 deficiency the factor 5 deficiency does not cause thrombosis factor 5 deficiency causes the factor 5 deficiency causes bleeding not thrombosis it causes bleeding the factor 5 laden mutation causes thrombosis mutation causes thrombosis and what is the other uh, factor 13 deficiency causes factor 13 deficiency again causes thrombosis factor 13 deficiency again causes thrombosis but factor 5 deficiency does not cause thrombosis factor 5 mutation causes thrombosis factor 5 mutation thromb causes thrombos uh, uh, thrombocytosis or thrombophilia what are the causes cause of thrombosis protein c deficiency protein s deficiency antithrombin 3 deficiency factor 5 laden mutation factor 13 deficiency hyperhomocysteinemia hyperhomocysteinemia so that's all for today thank you